Hello and welcome back to my channel. Today we'll be reviewing tips for replacing the rear brake pads on this 2014 Toyota Corolla. Now let's get started. So what are some of the symptoms that might indicate that the brake pads are worn and need to be replaced? Well, one, when you're setting the parking brake, you'll have to pull up the parking brake arm and the arm will travel further than it did when you originally purchased the vehicle. And that could mean two things. One, that the parking brake arm is out of adjustment. Or two, that the brake pads on the rear brakes are very thin and so the arm has to travel further to set the brake. Secondly, you will hear a chirping sound from the rear of the vehicle when you're driving down the street or when you're applying the brakes. And I'll try to explain why you're hearing the chirping sound. So this is, in my hand I have a worn brake pad. Typical thickness of a brand new brake pad is like maybe that thick and we'll show that a little more later. But once the pad is worn down, the rotor, which is located right here, will start to come in contact with this sensor. It's a, I call it an early warning sensor. And you can see right there, the, 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 I'm going to try to show you the shiny metal right there on the end of that sensor, which indicates that the rotor was coming in contact with that sensor and we could hear a chirping sound. As it rotates around, you hear chirp, 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 and it, it provides a warning to you. It says, you need to change your brake pads soon, not immediately. We noticed this chirping sound probably about 2,000 miles to, ago, and today we're changing the pads, and you see there's no issue, no damage, but I wouldn't go beyond, say, 2,000 miles, depending on how you use the vehicle, but you'll have to make your own judgment call on that. Now, let's move on to our supply list. On our supply list today, we have premium brake pads. I recommend using ceramic brake pads if you can find them and they work on your application. There's a, a brake pad brackets. We have a cross tool for the lug nuts on the wheel. We have a brake lubricant for the brake slides, 916 socket with extension, 22 millimeter box wrench, a very small flat tip screwdriver, and a specialty tool front and rear brake caliper tool that I got on loan from AutoZone. Also in the picture, you'll notice that we have a three ton hydraulic lift to lift the vehicle. And on the right, we have jack stands. See other items in the description below. In order to access the brake pads, you must first remove the wheel. So I'm gonna quickly go over some steps to do that. First thing you do before, so park your vehicle on a flat surface. Before attempting to lift the vehicle, you need to loosen up all of the lug nuts, at least maybe one or two turns. After that, you could pick an appropriate lift point on the back of the vehicle. There's a tow hook on the back of this vehicle and there's a lift point there. Look at your owner's manual and it will tell you where to properly lift the vehicle. Once you've lifted your vehicle with the hoist, always use jack stands to support the vehicle. Never trust that the hoist will hold the vehicle. It's not meant for that purpose. You can place a jack stands on underneath either side of the vehicle. Once again, refer to your car manual for the placement of those jack stands. For this next step, we'll need the 916 socket, the extension, and the ratchet. There are two 916 bolts holding on this brake caliper. This is your brake caliper, okay? There's one upper bolt right here, and there's a bolt directly below. Right about that location. So you'll need to loosen both of those bolts up and remove this caliper. When removing the caliper, caliper be extra careful not to twist this hose right here or any of the other lines so pay attention to what I'm doing as I remove this caliper in order to access this upper bolt 
I lift it up on this brake cable right here and I threaded the extension and the socket through underneath the, the parking brake cable to the 9 16th bolt. The bolts are loose. I'm going to pull them out and remove the caliper. So there's one bolt and there's a second bolt. Now I'm just going to wiggle this and set it right here just like that. Okay, so the next step is to remove the brake pads. Your pro tip for this is keep yourself very organized. Note in the picture you'll see that this is the upper caliper bolt and this is the lower caliper bolt. This is the outer the outer brake pad. I'm going to stick my finger in here in the back and lift that out. This is the inner brake pad. Notice how I'm staying organized. I also want to let you guys see that the sensor that I spoke about earlier is on the inner brake pad. Okay. Prepare to install the new pads. In order to install the new pads, I'm going to have to compress the brake piston, which is right here. And that's where the specialty tool comes in. Okay, and I'm going to show you guys that right now. But before I do that, I'm going to lift off, just, I'm pressing pressure right here and I'm lifting, and I'm just going to slide this portion of the caliper off in preparation to depress that piston. While I'm looking here, I see that this, these are the old brackets, top and bottom, and please take note, these brackets are different. The upper bracket does not have a notch right here. Notice that the lower bracket has notches. Okay, this is very important. Okay, I'm gonna set this down right now. Compress this piston. And actually this piston is already compressed, but I'm gonna make an attempt to show you how it will be done if I had to compress it. So I'm gonna reach into my tool set. I'm gonna grab the tools. It doesn't come with very good instructions. But I'm going to try to show you guys real quick. So you would take this right here and you're going to slide that in. Okay, like so. For this particular car, I have to you use adapter E as an echo. So I'm going to slide that on there like that. Okay, you guys see that set up? I'm going to create a gap right here so that this gap matches this gap right here, okay? Slide that on there. Hope you guys can see that. Carefully slide that in. You might see I'm twisting, rotating this bolt to reduce the size of the gap until I get it right. You see this space is decreasing, okay? Try it again, okay, decrease it a little more, notice the adapter is on here, okay, now slide that in there like that, okay, got it, and this is what the picture should look like, okay, hope you guys can see that, the adapter is at the bottom, and now we have the little pressure plate, and so at this point, I'm going to simply rope I'm going to hold this bolt right, so I snugged it, snug, I turned this bolt to the left to snug it up, and you see I can let go and it's not falling out, okay, like that. And then what you're going to do is rotate this T-handle, and you're going to keep rotating it and rotating it, and what that's going to do, it's going to compress that piston. And I just want to make the point, so I'm going to move to the other side of the vehicle. I'm going to do a very short video on how to compress the piston, and then I'm going to come back to this side. 
Okay, we're going to spray some lubricant around the, this uh, piston here so that it doesn't bind up on the rubber cover. This is very important. We have our primary tool. We have our adapter plate. And we have our backing, slide it on like that. All right, so that's where we left off on the other side. Take this, put it in here. Okay, that piece might roll around a little bit. Just be patient. It'll all come together. Notice that these tips are facing outward. Like that. Try again. There you go. Now I'm going to there rotate it like that so it increases the distance. You guys can see in there, you see the rubber boot is nice and oiled. And so now I'm going to begin turning my T-bar to compress the piston. Piston is compressing, and I'm monitoring the boot to make sure that the boot isn't twisting. Okay, it bottomed out. Now, now you need your 22 millimeter box wrench, and you got, that's what you're going to need to loosen up this bolt right here. Okay. And you're done. So let's go ahead and move back to the other side. We'll need the portion of the caliper that was removed, the premium brake pads, and the new brake pad brackets. So at this point, what we're going to be doing is replacing these brackets right here. And then also, we're going to be lubricating the slides for these boots. So let's get to it. Okay, now we have the outer portion of the caliper. Imagine that it sits on the vehicle like that. Notice that the brake pad brackets here have gaps, little holes, and right here they do not. Simply going to use my thumb, flip that one off, and place it right here next to the old one. And then I'm going to Take the new bracket and notice that it has these little, this little area right here fits perfectly into that area right there. Okay? So just put one side in, kind of line it up. You can look. And then press it into place. Check both sides to make sure that it's pressed into place. And you should notice that if you look in here, that, that little area is insecure. Okay, so let's go ahead and remove the other side. That's the back bracket. Replace that housing. Same thing, line everything up. Press it into place. Check the left side. Check the right side. Check underneath. You see that piece is in place. And now we're ready to install the brake pads. But before we do that, we need to lubricate these slides here. This is a point that a lot of people forget. So what we're gonna do is, this is a little lubrication grease. And we're simply going to lubricate the slides. It doesn't take a whole lot. Just smear it along. What's important though is you put it along the entire slide. Because when you install the boot, it's gonna push it. And that's good enough right there. This little packet here, probably you could do three or four brake changes, okay? 
after we have that, what we're gonna do now is then slide this piece back onto the slides. Watch, see what I'm doing here? Now I'm gonna just click it in place. You notice that? So at this time, you're gonna kind of rotate these rubber boots and make sure that they're installed properly. They shouldn't be twisting or binding. These look fine, okay? If you mistakenly loosen these bolts initially, make sure they're tight. And you probably need about 15 to 20 pounds of torque on these bolts. Okay, some people accidentally loosen these bolts. Make sure these are um, secure before you move on. Also, this is a good time to make sure that your brake cable is in place, that you haven't loosened any of this by mistake. The spring is in place. This is your, if you didn't know, this is your whole, this is your brake housing, your parking brake housing. Okay. So the spring should be in place, both hooks, just in case you accidentally knocked it off. This little uh, bubble here on the end of the wire should be secure behind this, this end of the uh, bracket. Okay. These are all things you need to double check. So let's install the inner pad first with the sensor. And if you get any dirt on these, they should be clean. You don't want to um, install brake pads that have had any type of oil or that have absorbed oil. You have to keep these very clean. One of the reasons that they have this little coating on here, sometimes they get dirty. Well, if you dirty up this little light coating of paint, it quickly burns off and it doesn't allow the liquid or whatever is on your hand to absorb down into the pad, which might cause uneven wear. And you notice it's just a paper thin coating and the only reason it's there to resist um, oil and things like that because they know what happens. So. That's what you get with a good premium pad. I'm cleaning both of these off. The little bit of oil that's on there is gonna burn off probably within a couple of miles. So before we install the brake pads, what we need to do is remove the shims off of the old brake pads and put them onto the new brake pads. So this shim, we call that a shim, was on the old pad. And I'm going to simply, you see there's a little button right there, so make sure that the shim lines up with the button. So that shim is installed. And now took the shim off the old, the other old pad. And I'm going to install that on the outer pad. Same process. Okay, shim's in place. Next what we're gonna do is install a little brake grease and extends brake life high temperature waterproof and basically what this does is it prevents brakes from squeaking if there's moisture i'm here on the west coast so we don't really have issues with moisture and that snow rock salt and things like that but if you live in an area where you're dealing with snow, a lot heavy rains, you know, driving through puddles, chances are you're gonna get some corrosion or oxidation in, in this area. And so this helps your pads from squealing, which might, in, might give you the indication that the brake pads need to be changed when actually the brake pads don't need to be changed. It's just that when the parts are moving together, you get this slight vibration and that vibration will cause a squeaking sound, which is different than the sound that you might get when the brake pads are warning or, or from the brake sensor. And so what you would do is you just, I'm just gonna put a little bit of this right here. And I'm putting it, notice, right where the caliper is touching. I put it in the middle by mistake, but you could see where the caliper was touching before, and that's where I'm gonna put it, okay? Same thing here. Gonna look on the back, see the, the X that was there. 
that's what's going to be touching and so that's where I'm going to put in my my lubrication because that's where it's going to touch so right where that X on the on the piston okay that's where that goes very simple so now let's go ahead and install the inner pad first so like this rotate it in you see how I did that and this might be a little tricky um, so what you're trying to do is you're pushing it down and inside of the, the bracket this is where your flat tip screwdriver might come in This is one of the more difficult parts of the entire job. So just have a little patience here. And ideally you get one side in and then the other side will fall in. Okay, there you go. And how, and how do I know that the inner pad is in place? So I'm gonna lift it up and you can see that it's flat, okay? If it wasn't in place, it wouldn't be flat. Also, let me see if I can show you. Um, I don't want to twist these wires back here too much, so it's hard to show you. But what I will show you is, notice that um, the, the, the pad is flat up, get up against the piston right here. So you might, basically what I did is I stuck it in and then I wiggled it back and forth until it dropped into the slot, okay? I'm gonna try to show you more visually when I do the outer pad. You, you kinda have to feel it. It's, it's really, it's hard to see, you just have to feel it. So on this one, once again, the pad is facing, the orange part of the pad is facing inward towards the rotor. So now I'm gonna stick my finger in here to one, make sure that I don't knock this pad loose while I'm installing the new one. And then two, it's gonna be ready for me to kind of push it into place this way. So you slide it in. And I don't know if you can see, some people put a like a flat tip screwdriver in there too. So. What I'm doing is I'm pushing, I'm creating more space, but there's a balance. If, if I pull pull out on this too far, that that old that the back pad's gonna pop out. So what I'm trying to do is press this piece inward while at the same time holding this piece steady. And what that's gonna done, and now you can see how the pad position of the pad has moved before it was deeper into the into the well and now it's come out well it, you know you can only bring it out so far before the this pad will fall out so there's a balance here so once again I'm putting my finger in here to keep the old the, the um, inner pad in place you see the shim is trying to come off there be patient. There you go. Okay. So now, so now what you need to do is, oops, these little brackets start moving around and it gets a little shaky on you. So you gotta play with it, wiggle it back and forth. And when it finds a slot, you'll know it, it'll drop in. So my problem here is I'm having issues with the shim. So I'm bringing it back out. I'm gonna reinstall the shim. And if you have, sometimes I'll, I'll, I'll take it on and off a couple of times 
But if it really, if it's super loose, just bend these tabs and tighten it up. Okay, I don't think I need to do that yet, but if it gets in the way again, I'll bend those tabs. So once again, I'm sliding it in. Can you see that, how I put that there and it compressed that side automatically? So that side's already compressed. And so now I just have to worry about compressing this side. Anyway, instead of putting that side in first, I'm gonna to try to do the other side first. Because sometimes it just works better like that. So now this side is in, I know that side is in, and I'm working on this side. So that's your pro tip. Sometimes you just gotta switch it up a little bit. And what I wind up doing is take, sticking a flat tip screwdriver in here and rotating it to create a space in here. At the same time, I had my flat tip screwdriver and I was depressing these springs, compress, compressing the, the springs so that I could slide the pad into these gaps right here. I used the screwdriver to compress the spring and then allow the pad to slide up and into the groove. Okay, I hope you guys can see that. So right now the pad is in the groove. I have a flat tip screwdriver in here and I'm pressing it. We're gonna go ahead and install the brake caliper. Okay, after struggling a little bit with getting the pads in place, I just want to, this, this part is a little challenging, so let's go over it. So we got this outer pad in place and what we're, the difficulty we're facing is how to create enough spacing right here so that we can slide the brake rotor in between this gap. Okay, and how do we maintain that spacing? And this is one of the challenging parts of the job. Okay, a lot of people just use, like see I just used a flat tip screwdriver and I'm just gonna rotate it but the, and I'm just, you don't wanna damage the brake pads but just stick your screwdriver in there a little bit and kind of flex it and you'll see. Right? And you notice I'm holding, look where I'm holding the caliper, right here and right here. So at this point, really, I want to compress the caliper, as, compress this as far as possible, these slides. Okay, now that I have, it's nice and even, all the way across, I'm gonna hold that in place, and then I'm gonna rotate this over. Okay, be very careful about how you touch and squeeze the caliper at this point, because any if you do it incorrectly, that gap is going to change and you could, one of the pads may fall out. So now you're going to take, try to line this bolt hole up where it was originally. I, I start there. So you're going to slide it in behind this brake dust cover. Okay. See how we did that? So I'm sliding it down. And it's, it's, you can see now that the gap has changed. So instead of trying to approach it from this way and, and mess with the pad, the gapping of the pads, I'm going to come back over here with my screwdriver and I'm just going to rotate and flex that, those pads again and maintain that space in between the pads. And at the same time, don't take that screwdriver out. And at the same time, I'm going to try to pull the caliper over and into place. So basically, I had the flat tip screwdriver maintaining a space in the pads. That's your pro tip. As I tried to get place the rotor in between the pads. 
and the pads we're trying to squeeze and manipulate, but by, by having this screwdriver in between the pads through the back side, I was able to maintain the gap and then slide the pads up and onto the rotate the rotor. All right, I'm feeling really good at this time. It's, it's a good feeling. So, got my top bolt here. For the, get your top bolt in place. You notice, once, once your pads are there, they're fine. So now, now I'm going to manipulate and move the, the caliper around so that I've found that hole. Might have to shake it a little bit, but there you go. It's starting to screw in. So now that I have the top bolt in, I'm going to go underneath and reattach the lower 9, 9 16 bolt. Okay, and then, see, shake it back and forth like that. It went right in. You see I'm shaking it. Now I'm gonna go ahead for the install. Once again, I'm threading underneath the cable. And I'm tightening this bolt. 30 to 40 pound, foot pounds of torque. So now I'm tightening it up the lower bolt. Same thing, nice and snug. So you get a little play there. Double check, make sure that none of these are twisted. It should look just like when you took it off. Double check your parking brake cable. Make sure it's in place. There's a spring down below. Make sure that spring is in place. You've replaced the brake pads. You've oiled the slides. And you've replaced the brake pad housing and you're ready to reinstall the wheel. So here's your wheel. I'll show you guys a little, a little pro tip that I use. We're just gonna install one bolt and then we're gonna go, move on from here. Okay, so I have a little stick here and place it right there, right under the center of the axle. Rotate the tire back onto it. And then I try to align lug nuts so that there's one straight up in the middle. And then I do the same for the tire. Okay. You see that's lined up? Now, take this little piece of wood and lift the wood up. And the wood gives me leverage so that I can move and get that bolt in place without having to lift up the tire. And you know this this video is not about installing tires, but I just wanted to show you that little tip. Go ahead and get that top bolt on. Okay, once you have that one on, then you can work. Always skip, skip bolts. These are all little pro tips I'm showing you guys that are, you probably should know already if you're doing this level of work. Then you skip a bolt and you come here. I'm gonna go ahead and stop now. This wraps up this video of replacing the rear brake pads on this 2014 Toyota Corolla. I hope you guys found my tips to be helpful. Please like and subscribe. And until next time, drive defensively.